Good morning. Happy Friday. It is August 2nd. It has been a long, long week, y'all. I cannot even tell you. It just has been so long. I am trying yet another microphone. I got this new one. It's the ones that you pin on you. Hopefully it won't be too crazy. Hopefully I didn't just blow your ears out by messing with it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's new. We're going to see how this one sounds. Um, I got some incense in today. I really, really love this incense. Um, it's one of my favorites. I thought I would share that with you as well. Um, we usually carry this when we're vending on site, but it is definitely one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I hope you have your tea. If you don't have it, grab it. It is time for a cup of and card. And today, this is episode five of my vlog. And today we are going to be talking about beliefs. So one of the things that I think a lot of people don't do is sit down and really think about what they believe, right? Everybody has, oh, we believe in this, we believe in that. But really, when it comes down to it, what do you really believe? What are your core beliefs? What is your faith, right? So I think the easiest way is to just tell you what I believe. Um, I was raised a Southern Baptist. Um, I was bussed off to a local church um, and attended every Sunday to church until probably I ran away from home around 14, 14, 15 years old. Um, but that's a whole other story. Um, but I, my, my beliefs were founded really on the, the fundamental values that my grandmother taught me. Um, one of the things that she always said to us, right, if you, you could go to the store and get whatever you want, right, get whatever you want, but don't come back to the house unless you got something for everybody, right? Don't bring it back to the house unless you're going to share. So that was something that was really fundamental to me. So if I ever went somewhere, I'm, I was always giving, giving to everybody. I would give to my sisters. I would give to my mother. Um, and I still give, right? I always feel like I want to make sure that I have something for someone, um, especially if it's someone who's important into my life. Um, you know, I'll always make sure, make sure that, you know, on Samhain, um, which I celebrate as the new year, um, on Samhain, I'll make sure I send something. And I may celebrate Yule occasionally as well. Um, but for the most part, those are the only two holidays as far as the Wheel of the Year is concerned that I celebrate. And, and that's where that belief originates, right? It's from my grandmother. Um, those beliefs were really just what led me to look for people who were like me. And oh, I'm extremely excited that about 20 years ago, I actually found people in my life um, that were able to give and be able to be a part of my life. Um, that's where those beliefs are today, right? That, that's where they came from. Um, what do I believe? Um, as, a, as the person sitting in front of you today, I believe that I am um, someone who celebrates the uh, five virtues of Hecate. So where do they originate? The five virtues of Hecate are a group of virtues that were put together by a, as, a, as a project for the Coven of Hecate, um, of which I'm a member. I'm a key bearer and a torch bearer. Um, we put together a list of virtues that we felt best represented the goddess. And there's a prayer associated or a hymn associated with it. And those virtues are um, compassion, courage, temperance, wisdom, and justice. And those virtues guide me every single day. It is something that I can relate to on just the most cellular level, right? It is my entire being. Um, so while those words are 
what those feelings, those imageries that it pulls forward, that's what I'm tied to. Those happen to be also part of the Covenant of Hecate and of course the Sanctuary of Hecate Brema, which is, I am the founder. So that's what I believe. Now the next thing we have to ask ourselves is why do we believe it? Okay? Why do we believe what we believe? So thinking about beliefs and religion and the way it's structured, if you think about the United States or actually think about the world, um, if you were to pull out a magnifying glass and say, where do all of this type of persons live? Or where does, where's this religion predominantly located? Um, you'll find that, you know, for the most part, religion or belief systems are regional, right? You'll find a different uh, mindset, let's say, in California than you will in North Carolina or in Switzerland or in Greece. Um, so each one of those areas has a different set of values. Those values equate to belief systems or belief structures. So when we think about this, why do I believe what I believe sitting in front of you today as a key bearer for the Covenant Hecate? Why do I believe what I believe? It all boils back down to what my grandmother taught me. You know, don't bring something in the house unless you have something for everyone, right? That's compassion. That's temperance. That's courage if you bring in the wrong thing. <laughs> um, but that's where those things come from. And I think that we all, sitting where we are today, are where we are based on those fundamental items that what we were developed with as a child and that regional area where we live. Um, one thing that calls to mind most, I mean, that I just can't even get away from, is when I was a, ch a child, I was attending a Free Will Baptist church. And um, this was a very rich church. It was um, located a good ways away when you're a little kid, you know. Um, they drove out the church bus and picked you up in the church bus and, and dropped you off at the church and then took you back home after services. And um, when I went, it was made very clear to me why I was um, poor, basically. And it, I was told that I was poor because God didn't favor me. And God didn't favor me because I didn't donate money to the church. So I remember, you know, going out with, you know, barefoot and shorts in the summertime, running around with my sister, picking up soda pop bottles and going to the store and trading in soda pop bottles and we would get candy or what have you. And I would save a little penny here and a little penny there. And when I went to the church, I would put my little envelope and I would write my name on it so Jesus knew who I was. So I thought that if I put these pennies in this little envelope and I wrote my name on it, that Jesus would know who I was and that I would be blessed and then I would not be poor then I would be able to have, you know, the same stuff that the kids at school had. I would be able to have dinner. Yeah, just dinner. I would be able to have, you know, heat, electricity, you know, those things that a lot of times we didn't have. Um, sometimes my, um, my mother was, I mean, she was in her own abusive relationship so she was not always making the best decisions for us. So we, we suffered quite a bit as children. And I felt that if I put my pennies in this envelope, that Jesus would see my pennies and then he would bless me and then I would no longer be poor. I think that just looking back on that, like it, all, it still brings up a lot of emotion for me because that, in my opinion, is spiritual blackmail. Because here I was in a home, you know, suffering with, you know, we had no food. We, well, we had a lack of, of food all the time. We had a lack of attention. We have a lack of just feeling accepted. And it basically pushed me to a point where I felt I had nowhere to go, that even Jesus couldn't love me. 
And this is what everybody had. Oh, Jesus loved me. We're singing the song. But he didn't love me because I, w I didn't have enough money in my offering envelope. So that put me in and so, formed a foundation to what I thought spirituality was all about and what I really thought organized religion was about. And to this day, I still feel the same way because as a grown person um, in moments of, of suffering when I didn't have food, I needed to go and get help from the churches, from food banks and so forth. And I was again forced to sit down and pray with them and accept Jesus as my savior in order to get groceries. So why do I believe the things that I believe? I think was founded in that, in that experience. Those experiences built up to where I am now um, with the uh, five virtues being something that I can look at as being something I can manage. I don't need someone else to give this to me. I'm not waiting for a savior. No one is coming to save me. No one's coming to save you, right? We're here on this little planet hurling through space all on our own, right? We're, we're here. It's just us. So we've got to do it. We've got to put forth the effort. We have to have courage. We have to have compassion. We have to be able to live in temperance, right? We have to be able to use our wisdom and apply justice fairly and equally to everyone. And that is why I believe what I believe. So our last question today is about how do you incorporate what you believe into your daily life? So I can tell you how I do it. Um, I have a website, thenewsriverwitch.com or newsriverwitch.com, um, where I have things for sale. I have readings and oracle decks and eBooks and all, all sorts of things. Um, with the sales of that website, I take and I make donations to or buy things for two local charities in my area. And this is through the covenant or through the um, Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo. This is my sanctuary promise. My sanctuary commitment is to help support these organizations. Um, the first organization is Forever Pause, and that is a TNR group, and that's Trap, Neuter, Return. And what they do is they go out and they host feral colonies of cats um, and they feed these colonies. They make sure that they're vetted and they're all fixed and there's not kittens flying around everywhere and upper respiratory and all of those things. Um, I've, for, I started out trapping for them. Um, we would go out and set traps and bring the cats in and take them to the vet, get them spay or neutered, and then take them back and release them. Um, now, since I've gotten a little older and it's a little more difficult for us to get around as easily, um, we now work through monetary donations. We will help donate to their yard sales and buy raffle tickets and promote the things, you know, um, we make things in the shop and we sell things to help benefit um, that organization. We also support the Blessing Box of Goldsboro. Now what this is, it is uh, these adorable boxes. They're purple and pink and they're set up at the crossroads. I thought that was very appropriate. Um, they're set up at different crossroads in Goldsboro and there's some out here in Seven Springs as well. And you, they fill them or volunteers fill them with food or non-perishable items. Sometimes in the winter time we'll put socks and gloves and chapstick, hand lotion, sanitizer, um, feminine hygiene products. Um, we'll put in, of course, food, um, ready to eat meals. Um, we'll put in, you know, we'll go to the ones that are close to the housing areas in Goldsboro. So we'll put in um, food that can be cooked on the stove. Um, we'll also put fresh fruit like produce and um, apples and oranges and things like that um, so that there's fresh fruits and vegetables available as well. Um, and these, these boxes, these blessing boxes are set up for the, the food insecure and the home insecure, right? We put bottles of water in the summertime, sweaters in the, summer, in the winter, scarves, um, those sorts of things. And those things that I do for, for those two groups, 
Um, I do those out of what I experienced, right? I, I hate being cold. And I can't imagine anyone being cold and laying on the ground. It's, it's awful. And I, I want to make sure that I'm trying to do my part. That if there is someone out there who does not want to be cold, they don't have to be cold. If someone out there is hungry, they don't have to be hungry. Um, so that's why I do the things I do. And that's how I incorporate that into my daily life. Um, I use this as a replacement for um, Hecate's Supper or the Dipen. Um, that basically is where um, you would leave offerings out at the, at the crossroads for um, the, those that needed to take them, would take them. It was an offering to the goddess. Um, so I see that as my way of doing. So what do you think? What do you give back? What, how do you do this? I'm going to leave these questions in the, in the description. And I want you to post in there how you give back. What do you believe? Why do you believe it? And how do you incorporate that into your daily life? I'm really interested to see what you have to say. Um, I'm going to be sharing this across several groups. I'm definitely going to share it with the Covenant of Hecate group. I would love to see what other members of other sanctuaries have to say. Let me, let me know what you do. How do you live by it? Or do the virtues play a role? Tell, tell me about it. I want to see that in the comments. Um, all right, let's pull a card. We're going to pull a card today from the River Witch Oracle. And our card today, I'm going to hold that up for you. That is the grandmother card. Very good card today, right? Um, the grandmother card has three key words that are wisdom, nurture, and timeless love. So when we think about our when we think about our words today, wisdom is something that, as one of the virtues of Hecate, it is something that I think about on a daily basis. It is something that I spend a great deal of time trying to call upon call on the wisdom of the ancestors, the wisdom of, of those who have passed on, um, someone who you can relate to. Um, we want to use our wisdom to make each day better, not only for us, but for others as well. Our next word is nurture. I'm sorry, <laughs> nurture. Um, nurture is what you get from that grandmotherly figure, right? That motherly figure. And, and here again, we're playing right into Hecate and her role as Sotiera, you know, the mother of the world. Um, that is ultimately what we're trying to, to give back. We're celebrating the ability to come together and become one. Oh, Alexa's talking to us. Um, so the next word here is timeless love. Timeless love is, when you think about it, it's that moment of acceptance. It's when you know that no matter what in the world, there will always be someone there by your side. That person that will always be there to, no matter what happens, you can call them on the phone, you can say, we haven't spoke in blah, blah amount of time. I miss you. Can we talk? And they say yes, right? That's timeless love. Try not to let too many days pass for that. Everybody needs to be appreciated. Timeless love is important. All right, so that's our card today. Again, the grandmother card. And this is part of the River Witch Oracle. It's available on my website at newsriverwitch.com. Remember all those sales go to support the Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo. Um, I am really looking forward to the comments on this blog today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please post them. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to uh, tap that subscriptions bell um, so that you'll get notifications each time I post a new vlog. Um, have a glorious day and a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.